All right. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining the session called Building Disease and Disease Specific Information Systems that fit into the broader Ministry of Health digital ecosystem. Um, so, the topic for today's session. Uh, so while ministries of health globally have made huge gains in digitizing their health management information systems, a lot of diseases such as malaria neglected tropical diseases require a significant amount of data beyond the HMIS in order to plan and implement effective programs and conduct monitoring and evaluation. For example, data on community health workers, bed net campaign coverage, disease transmitting vectors and supervision programs, and mass drug administration campaigns are typically data streams not represented in an HMIS. A flood of donors and NGOs attempting to fill these gaps has led to the creation of many different siloed project or partner-specific information systems, creating an extremely confusing and unwieldy landscape and a lot of duplication of systems. So today we'll hear from three individuals who have been working to develop government-owned malaria and NTD information systems that are extensions of and integrated with the HMIS and that fit into the broader Ministry of Health's digital health ecosystem. Uh, so first we'll have William Aviles, a health informatics technical advisor at the Clinton Health Access Initiative, filling in for Dr. Marcella Reyes from the Department of Informatics within Panama's Ministry of Health. We will then hear from Dr. Balthazar Condrino, who is the Malaria Program Director within the Ministry of Health in Mozambique. And finally, Amsea Tafera is the Integrated NTD Data System and ME Advisor of the NTD Program at the Federal Ministry of Health in Ethiopia. Um, so first, I'll hand it over to William for um, a presentation, uh, followed by Dr. Condrino, followed by Amsea, and then we will shift into a panel discussion and Q&A. So over to you, William. Thank you, Samin. Um, so I hope you can hear me well. Um, you can see my screen now. Um, good morning, good afternoon. Um, my name, as uh, Samin mentioned, is William Aviles. I am working um, as a technical advisor in the Clinton Health Access Initiative. Um, uh, we've been working with the Minister of Health of Panama for a um, few years, for a few years now. And um, I am filling in for uh, Dr. Reyes, who couldn't participate today. So um, my presentation today is about uh, the Malaria Data Repository that the Ministry of Health Act bill and is integrated with the National Disease Surveillance System. Um, first, to, um, to start, I would like to explain a little bit about the systems, um, about the National Surveillance System, which is called CISBIC. Um, this is a custom government-owned platform. Um, it's been collecting nominal data for a lot of notifiable diseases since 2014. It's supported by national legislation and it has a, a lot of um, uh, notified diseases um, to determine the appropriate action to control or break its patient center. Um, as I mentioned, the individuals are recorded in the system using the national identification number. However, it's also um, possible to, to enter information from people that is not, uh, that has no international identification number. Um, this way they can be tracked over time. Um, it's custom tailored. Uh, it was developed and supported in-house um, within the Ministry of Health Informatics Office. So it means that it fits for the needs at the health facility levels in the um, Minister of Health, and it is extensible. Uh, it was designed to plug in different modules and needed. Um, that's an opportunity that we um, take into, uh, we take advantage. Um, so um, to build the malaria specific information module, since um, the country is working toward uh, eliminating malaria in 2025, um, they needed uh, a lot of more information that um, the basic one in the uh, six back system. So they needed to include case investigation, treatment, um, follow up, and a lot of more information that um, Samin was mentioning before. Uh, so uh, six big is working since 2024, um, for 2014, I'm sorry. And then um, the malaria development uh, starting in 2019. 
uh, at first it was piloted at the central level. Then in 2020, we had a regional pilot um, supported by uh, the four endemic regions in the country. And we had, um, we run a detailed mon monitoring and evaluation um, to ensure that the system was ready to be scaled at national level. Um, this year, the scale up was, the scale up was completed. Um, the, the system is scaled at the national level in 17 different regions, and um, there is a monitoring and evaluating plan, which is uh, basically performed at multiple levels periodically. Um, in parallel, uh, um, besides working with uh, CISBIC and the national surveillance system, uh, at the HAS2 instance uh, for mobile reporting of different vector control interventions and campaigns, uh, what is developed, developed and connected to CISBIC for a joint case of vector control data visualization, which means uh, that we are moving towards uh, having a data warehouse in order to um, analyze, um, better analyze information related to malaria. Uh, well, we have CISBIC, and then we have some interventions uh, collected using mobile devices. And we have also well, supportive supervision for community health worker, vector control teams, for site management teams, health facilities, and diagnostic points. That information is collected using the HIS2 tools, and um, an ETL process was developed also to connect information, to interpret information from CISBIC to DHS2, so we can have at the end a uh, dashboard that can basically show information together, you know, providing um, a more specific information at all levels. Um, I, I, I had to mention that uh, the information in, in the malaria surveillance system is collected at the locality level, which is the lowest uh, level in the administrative organization unit for the country. Uh, so we can he see here an example. We can see a screen uh, from CISBIC. Uh, you can see there's, there's the information for notification, uh, the, the lab testing, the, the treatment, the, the investigation of the case, the follow-up, and uh, more important in um, the classification of the case. Uh, since um, the, based on the classification of the case, uh, they can have more uh, a more strategic planning to control uh, malaria outbreaks. And below we can see uh, some examples uh, from the application in DHS2. Um, we can see the, the application for IRS, and we can see as well uh, the application for this, uh, LLI and distribution. And, and monitoring and evaluation that converts into uh, a lot of dashboards that we have in DHS2 um, that are being used to, to plan accordingly for all malaria interventions in the country. So the, in summary, there have been uh, a lot of advances in rolling out this platform. However, there are still some work to ensure that um, the country has adequate tools to achieve elimination in 2025. Um, one of the challenges uh, that uh, we can we can see in the country is to uh, guarantee the tech sustainability and the informatics office is adopting new technologies, meaning in this case, uh, the DHIS2 instance, um, but there is a big gap in terms of number of human resources requir required to develop and maintain the system. Um, we don't have uh, a secure budget as uh, um, to provide appropriate resource to maintain the, this platform working. And we see a, lo uh, a big gap in training and monitoring capacity since uh, the uh, rollover at the local levels is, is really big in, in, in the country. So there is a gap in the Ministry of Health to ensure um, adequate monitoring of end user, the trainer, the training and also um, to ensure the data quality from the uh, notification coming from the field. And that includes uh, all the notification uh, collected by community health worker, vector control teams, and the uh, notification that are being collected in the health facility level. However, um, as I mentioned, there are um, a lot of successes. Uh, one of the big success that we have in the country is uh, um, that this platform has been so well um, adopted that uh, there are plans to include additional diseases like HIV, dengue, TB, and flu to be used in DHS2 as um, the data repository for um, more, more 
domain health domains in the country. Um, I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna pass um, to Samin. Over. Okay, thank you, William. Um, next we'll hear from Dr. Contrino from Mozambique. We'll start sharing. Um, okay, um, good. Um, thank you, Samin. Um, good morning, good afternoon. Um, yeah, so I will talk um, for malaria information system to complement other health information system. I will, I will give you um, a context for Mozambique. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, in Mozambique, uh, for malaria program in Mozambique, use, as you may know, a large amount of diverse data for strategic plan, program implementation, and m and &E. So these are the strategy for malaria in most of the countries in Mozambique is the same. It's commodities, health facilities, community cases, until um, health promotion, IRS, bed nets, and so on. Next slide, please. Um, so all this um, this information um, provided um, they come from the they was fragmented across spreadsheets and partner system. Um, you can see in these slides the for example the commodities there was um, open LMIS um, the access data warehouse DHIS two. Um, if you see the entomological surveillance there is this. Excel spreadsheet and the DHIS2 vector link for the partners, bed nets, there is an Excel spreadsheet, and there is a different, different systems comes from different partners and um, um, to inform um, the malaria. So the impact for this is we do, uh, we have a, a delay in terms of access for information. There is a, some, there was a limited ability to to review data, to analyze in, 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 in real time. Next slide, please. In, um, in 2016, um, so we did a surveillance assessment um, to, to evaluate how the surveillance is, is going in Mozambique. So the report um, showed that uh, there is a, what I presented um, before, there is a fragmented and recommended to have a, this integrated malaria um, storage system um, to, um, to address the challenge that um, I, I, I spoke before. So what we did, just use the HMIS and LMIS. We did some integration on this via API. For, and for these spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets like vector control, entomologic, alpha promotion, and surveys. Uh, we design and develop a new data entry forms and start directly to reporting into IMIS. IMIS is an integrated malaria information storage system um, via web capture, Android capture, and Excel imports. Um, all historical data and the model was compiled and mapped and imported to one repository. And uh, through this repository, we develop a specific and the various device dashboards. Next slide, please. Um, so what's, what we have now, uh, the end result is a comprehensive malaria information system that complements and plug into existing systems. So actually, we do have a IMIS malaria repository. So we can see in, in green, there is a what we did the integration. It was a SISMA HMIS integration and LMIS. And you see in blue, there is a newly digitized. It was all these modules into um, supervision and data quality audit. Um, case-based 
financial tracking, airflow motion, error warning system, surveys, and vector control. All this was new development. Um, so what we have actually is we don't have, there is no disruption or competition with um, existing reporting flows um, for L facility, district and provincial HMIS. Um, these new forms that um, we have all these forms and uh, was um, um, while the people are using um, at districts and the provincial level, so they inform and they update. Um, so this is a continuous, continuous process. So, and actually we do have the process for academic NGOs partners in the reporting data, all that in the, in the Mozambique and NMCP, even from the partners and the Minister of Health came from, came from one repository, this um, HM, I miss malaria repository. Next slide, please. Um, in the Minister of Health, we have the Department of Information System. The department is leading all information system in the Ministry of Health. And also we do have a Department of Information Technology. So these two the departments, uh, it's under the um, Department of Planning and the Cooperation. It's uh, leading all, all information in the Ministry of Health. Um, so we we are we are we engage those those two departments to work close with them to make sure that we are aligning in the Ministry of Health. In terms of development, at the malaria program with the partner technical part, partners, we have uh, two technical partners, Chai and the South Digital. Um, we have uh, this technique to develop all these forms, software um, that I, I presented. Um, for the Department of Information System, there is an architecture de decisions, approve and guide integrations, ensure if IMIS is not duplicating what other systems do. For in the DTIC, um, works specifically for several specifications and requirements. Um, in terms of um, implementation, so we have a technical working groups. We establish these technical working groups to supervise and users and users review and the troubleshoot operational and technical challenge and discuss um, users' feedback and, and review and validate updates to system. Um, what is the requirements um, long term? I will hand the presentation to talk um, about, about the long term. Long term, what we have in plan is to coordinate resource planning and mobilization to ensure adequate resourcing across malaria program, DISH, and DTIC to sustain the system. Um, so we do have a plan to increase support from DISH and DTIC to maintain system and manage technical vendors as a technical project manager partners phase out. And finally, to continue coordination to ensure end users not um, burdened with multiple devices and system. As you can imagine, actually, it's not just malaria, but other programs use the, the, the devices using some systems. So well, while we work with the DISH and the DTIC, we make sure and that's coordinate that all of this, we don't have overlap or duplicate um, the platforms and device. Um, so I will stop here and thank you for your attention. Okay. Uh, thank you, Samin. Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, uh, my name is Amsa Yotaferra. I'm working uh, as Integrated Entity Data System and MND Advisor at Ministry of Health Ethiopia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay. 
<clears throat> uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, say something about the rationale of uh, development of uh, national NTD database uh, in Ethiopia uh, because of uh, uh, many reasons. Uh, as uh, you know, the HMIS didn't uh, capture all uh, data elements and indicators for uh, NTD program. Uh, implementation as is that of that uh, any database is established with uh, site savers uh, international uh, with the objective of optimizing program planning uh, using action uh, the second is easily accessed by program team and the donors uh, uh, and also decrease uh, fragmented and heterogeneous system utilization uh, across uh, different NTD programs and decrease unnecessary data extraction from different platforms uh, is another uh, uh, reason. Uh, uh, the other is also enhance government ownership. And uh, after, at the end of the day, this uh, national NTD database is uh, helpful for uh, desert preparation for uh, disease elimination. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, starting in 2017, uh, it uh, expands the NTD indicator being recorded by the HMIS, I think. Uh, the listed indicators are uh, uh, planned to uh, collect the NTD program indicators uh, by uh, six and uh, age disaggregated from uh, uh, health post and uh, health center level. Uh, I think uh, most of the data are uh, mass drug administration related data and uh, case management related data uh, came from uh, HMIS DHIS2 system. Uh, in this uh, season, I think uh, the NTD DHIS2 system uh, design is. Uh, initiated in 2007 uh, to uh, capture uh, huge uh, program related uh, data elements and indicators. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, as you see, uh, our reporting system is uh, looks like this one. Uh, we have uh, data from the MDA and uh, uh, morbidity and uh, stock data, as you know, uh, most of the uh, prevention mechanism or elimination mechanism for NTD is uh, administrating mass drug administration and uh, implementing uh, WASH NTD coordination. Uh, uh, we have routine uh, data and event data at the same time to get information for elimination uh, based on survey system. Uh, we have uh, uh, different service uh, for uh, each this specific uh, uh, programs, LF, trachoma, oncosrochiasis, and cystos mm -hmm. STH program. Uh, uh, most of our data start from the community level. Uh, we have uh, paper based, uh, came through uh, from the health post level, uh, uh, HMIS reporting form. And initially, we uh, tried to pilot in HIS to implement, to capture individual data on the community side. And uh, we have uh, Excel based uh, data and HMIS based data uh, and the event or uh, survey related data, then all this data is integrated into NTD database. Uh, uh, and this uh, NTD program is expected to uh, report for the global purpose, like TIMF ACOMA elimination form uh, and uh, different uh, drug request forms and reporting forms, plus epidemiological reporting form to the picture and ITI. Uh, at the same time, all these uh, uh, forms are integrated into NTD data, uh, uh, NTD data system. So 
at the end of the day, uh, we have a centralized uh, NTD uh, data system, uh, which captures from different NTD uh, activity, both the Excel form from the HMIs and from the uh, survey data collected using different ODK formats and uh, WHO reporting formats are uh, already uh, uh, imported into NDTD data uh, system. So we can get uh, the full picture of NDTD program data under the NDTD program. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, these are all the uh, initial uh, phase. The, the, this is vertical reporting and integrated reporting system, previously, uh, starting from 2017 to 2018. Uh, we implement uh, this kind of uh, scenario. But now we are uh, using uh, the both uh, this vertical reporting and integrated reporting system uh, simultaneously. Uh, so our uh, our interest is to integrate all NTD program into uh, one system. Uh, next slide. Yeah, uh, these are the, the NTD uh, database architecture. Uh, our data for mass drug administration uh, came through the this vertical reporting and HMIS reporting system. Uh, all this data routinely analyze uh, their uh, discrepancy uh, before uh, send to uh, the HMIS. We have also morbidity management data like TT surgery, veil uh, treatment, uh, and uh, new arm radiation program data related. So, and uh, lymphedema management and hydrocyte related data. All those data are uh, assessed quarterly uh, and give feedback for the regional level. Uh, and this all this data is uh, came through uh, HMIs, and uh, we ex we also uh, use this HMIs data and integrate into. Uh, NTD data. We have also different survey data and wash data from the M water, and all these uh, global required, uh, reporting requirements are expected to uh, integrate into NTD database. Uh, these are the uh, the integrated uh, NTD data system architecture uh, for our uh, use. Next slide. Yeah, these are the, our data came through the data system and the vertical reporting system starting from 2008 to uh, 2001 with uh, this is specific with major PC entities. Uh, you can see the difference uh, with the two system. I think uh, even if there is uh, some improvement from year to year uh, with uh, data quality, uh, there is uh, some uh, discrepancy between uh, DHS to or HMI system with the vertical system. So we are running the two parallel system uh, to uh, strengthen the HMI DHS to system. Uh, so uh, still uh, we have no uh, confidence to use uh, HMIS DHS2 system data for program uh, planning and improvement. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, during the, those uh, implementation, we have challenges encountered. Uh, the first one is inconsistency of population denominator in DHS2 and uh, parallel reporting system. Uh, from regions came from uh, data came from the region side is uh, differ from uh, DHIS to system. This is the main challenge to uh, harmonize uh, the two system. Uh, the other one is limited coordination between HIT and the program team to address common bottlenecks, uh, especially as the data uh, entry stage is 
challenging. Uh, the other one is fragmented organizational units and calendar in the NETD system uh, across uh, various implementing partners and within also uh, the government system is also the challenge. Uh, the other one is insufficient human resource, especially at district level and uh, under uh, uh, motivated because the career structure of the HIT is uh, not uh, as expected. Uh, the other one is poor infrastructure condition and lack of uniform infrastructure development at various levels of care. Uh, this is also uh, another challenge. Uh, as you know, the NDTD program is endemic at the hard to reach area. So getting uh, those uh, entity data from hard to reach area is so another challenge. Uh, the other one is knowledge and the skill gap of HIT in the NDTD indicators and data element is also another uh, major uh, integration challenge for NDTD program. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, progress on filling gaps and full migration to HMIS reporting. Uh, uh, the first thing is provide capacity building training on data and analysis. I think uh, we gave uh, a national level uh, capacity building training for implementing partners and uh, government staffs, uh, plus in some region, at uh, zonal level, uh, uh, data use and analysis uh, training was given for HIT and uh, NTD program officers. The other one is uh, conduct quarterly monitoring and evaluation technical working groups with the implementing partners and the mm -hmm. government to see the major data quality uh, challenge and the uh, integration of NTDs into uh, the wider health system. Uh, the other one is every quarter conduct data analysis on the two reporting system and provide feedback at uh, different uh, levels of health system is also uh, our continuous uh, uh, work for program. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, our key achievements uh, during uh, the stay of uh, uh, in this uh, NETD uh, integration. Uh, for mobility management, uh, we use uh, HMIS data for uh, decision making and planning purpose. Uh, we don't know, we don't uh, use a parallel report for uh, case management NETDs. Eight key NETD performance indicators are mainstreamed into uh, the National Health Information System. This is a big success for the NETD program. NETDs are part of HMI's quarterly report starting from 2018. Both event and routine historical data captured in the NETD DHIS2 starting from 2015. So our NETD DHIS2 system captures both uh, the survey, the case management, the MDA, and the WASH data for the program uh, improvements. Uh, the other one is the NETD DHIS2 database hosting in the country to sustain the system is already from the cloud to uh, EPHI server is already uh, transited. Uh, the other one is a NTD mill technical working group is established to facilitate uh, many streaming. Uh, to get the attention of the higher level, a NTD scorecard is developed. Our future perspective is uh, uh, we have piloting the ECHIs under the three regions. So uh, uh, our plan is to uh, integrate ECHIS uh, with uh, HMIS and DHIS2 system. We have also implementing uh, biometric data collection for uh, TT uh, surgery data. Uh, we uh, using a uh, uh, survey CTO. So our plan is to integrate uh, biometric data into NDTD DHIS2 system. We advocate zero, to uh, zero tolerance on parallel reporting system and strengthening integrated uh, approaches are uh, uh, interest. Import NTD historical data set into the uh, systems. 
and continue capacity building and ETD data is culture reporting and quality is also another uh, planning for the next uh, future. I think for the time, uh, thank you for your attention. I can stop here. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, uh, apologies for that. Uh, so the first question is for Amsia. Um, I think we can move over into the Q&A uh, portion of the, present, uh, the panel discussion. And if folks have questions, they can also type them in the chat. Uh, but uh, first question uh, for you, Amsia. So you mentioned that there are some challenges with health information technology, directorate collaboration, and limited resources on their side. Uh, when did you first engage with HIT to gain their support and buy-in for a new NTD data system? Um, what, what did that sort of engagement process look like? And uh, with the challenges that you described, uh, what are sort of some of the uh, approaches you'll be using going forward to try to strengthen collaboration? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think uh, I started to join uh, HITD directorate. I'm working at the uh, NETD team currently, but uh, we are working with uh, HITD plus policy plan monitoring and evaluation director to strengthen this data system. Uh, starting from uh, 2018, when I was at Arte International working as a data manager, uh, starting from the pilot phase of this data system, I'm uh, involving on the piloting phase in 2018 for this database. And currently, uh, I'm joining uh, in 2021 from the Ministry of Health with the site saver. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, we have a good uh, communication with HITD uh, directorate, especially on the work of ECHIS piloting. Uh, we will work together to even, uh, there are some uh, issues related to system related issue uh, on uh, NETD data element uh, and indi indicator setup. And so, uh, we closely work with uh, the HITD team to figure out uh, some of the uh, challenges of data elements, indicator setup, even the validations and uh, data quality problems with uh, the HITD uh, program. I think uh, now uh, to give a capacity building uh, program, HIT is one uh, major bullet for us to uh, give the training for HIT and NETD program at the same time with the NETD program. So uh, we are working with, closely working with the uh, uh, HITD team plus policy plan directorates. Uh, uh, to further strengthen, to get more uh, uh, sound or uh, uh, from the the two directorates, uh, we closely work with them. Um, and maybe a similar question to you, uh, Dr. Contrino, could you sort of describe how you first engaged with uh, Dish and DTIC to gain their support and buy-in for a new malaria, uh, malaria system and um, what the model of collaboration has been? 
Um, yes, uh, thank you, Samin. Um, um, initially, what we did is the um, I platform is integrated in DHIS2 in the same system that um, is using in the Minister of Health with DISH. Um, and then we did a presentation um, for DISH to present what we have, what the, was the, the plan for the implementation, the timeline, all of this. So we received a green light from them. Yes, um, we receive. Sorry, uh, now you can hear me. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm you sorry. cut out, but we can hear you now. Okay. Um. So I have some interference. Okay. Yes. Um. I will receive a green green light for for them. Yeah, to move forward. Um, so we start to work with our technical um, partners to develop the platform, all of this. And then we engage DISH for the to be part of the, the training, to train the, the train of trainers, to be part of supervisors. And also when we create a task force, a task force to follow this, um, um, this I miss, so we do integrated also people from DISH. Um, and uh, okay, they will be part of the, the process. Um, and then we develop a transition plan because okay, we have to, um, this support is coming to the hands. And uh, when we create this transition plan, we do have every monthly meetings to follow the process. I think, uh, so actually, um, Dish and uh, the tech, all of them, they are more um, more engaged. They're part of the process. And uh, yeah, they know very well about time. Thank you. And question both for you, Amsea and Dr. Crinchino. Is there anything you wish you had done differently in terms of collaboration uh, and engagement with your the HIT in Ethiopia and with uh, DISH in Mozambique. If you could go back, is there anything you would do differently to, um, I guess, just improve the way that the system is working and any lessons to share? Can start with you, MC. Uh, go ahead for this. Shall I continue Sorry, with something? Yes, yes, please. If you could just share um, with the sort of HIT collaboration, um, is there anything you wish you had done earlier or done differently um, looking back on it when you're first starting this work? Yeah, actually, uh, at the beginning, uh, there was uh, some uh, communication gap with uh, HITD and NTD program because the ministry advocate one plan, one report, and one budget system, uh, clearly following with the HMI DHS system. But uh, our the NTD program uh, majorly gets the eight key indicators from the HMI indicator, but for the program planning and decision and improvement purpose, the HMI data is not enough to see our program. So at the initial stage, there, is, there was some uh, communication gap between the HITD and NETD program. But uh, after the uh, discussion with the directorate level, uh, with uh, uh, even with the implementing partner in the donor side, uh, we come up with uh, a uh, agreement with the HMI, HITD directorate to parallelly uh, implement uh, the entity database and even to 
uh, work on to strengthen the HMI state because uh, our eight indicators are came through uh, from the HMI. So now I think with the uh, zonal level training, I think we have uh, more than uh, 100 zones in Ethiopia. So uh, we uh, collaboratively give uh, training for HITs and NTD program because we uh, identify the data quality problems, the integration uh, problems, uh, both the HMIs and the NTD program. So uh, currently, the HITD team is uh, part of the NTD data use program training part. Uh, so uh in this time i think uh there is no uh, conflict between the hitd and the uh, NDTD program we are we, we all work for the same goal to provide a quality data for uh, program improvement purpose so we are uh, i'm also supporting the hmis hitd directors on the ishis as well as HMIs with NETD perspective. They can also support me on the uh, improvement of or the use of uh, NETD database for uh, NETD program improvement. So I think uh, now uh, there is no uh, conflict between uh, the NTD program and the, the, the HIT program. So our collaboration is in a good way. Thank you. Great. And Dr. Cringino is uh, speaking to your collaboration with Tisha as well. Is there anything you wish you had done differently, sort of reflecting on the work now? Um, thank you, Samir. So I would like to share. Uh, uh, the experience in Mozambique, um, the collaboration we did, it's about the server. Uh, when the, when the, we made decision to create the server to post in the data in the Minister of Health, I think this was a great idea from the dish, from the Minister of Health. Um, so because of this server, it's not just for malaria repository, but can help uh, the Minister of Health to strengthen their, um, their repository, their system to hosting the data. Um, I think the most important is not just to have uh, some, um, to strengthen the malaria program or any other different program, but also to make sure that the system is also strengthened. Um, the system, in this case, in the means of health, the health information system is strained. If we do have opportunity with the donors, the partners to support the system, if um, all right. And for William, um, just kind of from the perspective of the Department of Informatics, which is kind of the equivalent of HIT in Ethiopia and Sisha in Mozambique um, as the number of, of health information systems. Oh, sorry, I think your yeah. connection. So yeah, 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 so uh, thank you. So actually we are in process to, to moving the, to hosting all this report that that's uh, to the Minister of Health. Thank you. Okay, we lost you for a few um, seconds there at the end. Um, if you want to repeat anything about uh, the last thank you no 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 I was okay. talking about this um, data repository I said that it actually so it's most important to engage uh, the Minister of Health and strengthen their capacity thank you great um, and so for William from the Department of Health Informatics perspective um, as health information systems are growing in number and scale how has the informatics department been managing this increasing demand? Yeah, thank you, Sami. Um, I would say there has been different strategies to face the um, the challenges that um, brings 
to have a lot of more users, a lot of more system to maintain and support. Um, one of those is to increase um, the number of human resources in the Department of Informatics. Um, that's been done um, through the partnership with the Regional uh, Malaria Elimination Initiative. Um, that's uh, been some sort of palliative uh, um, solution in the midterm while um, the country start uh, planning a, a little bit better for uh, mobilizing resources through um, different donors or different, uh, including the, the national budget to the, um, the health informatics office. Um, the second strategy, it's, um, it's based on developing more capacity at the regional level, training people at the regional level to be the first, um, the first support team for, for the local level implementation. So um, they basically are working with the um, regional AP office. So they can they can work um, um, they can work providing solution to um, the first line of the um, end users. For example, the, the people that is uh, filling out the the, the 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 forms in the health facility level. So. That's been another strategy that um, has been um, basically uh, used for for the the, the, the increased demand. Um, another strategy has been uh, having implementing uh, ND, NDM or other platforms for um, better support to end users. Um, the MDM platform, the, the mobile device management platform, provides a lot of um, functionalities that provides a lot of um, support to the health informatics department to uh, increase the, the capacity that they have to provide um, support to end users. So um, there have been uh, several combination of strategies. This has been a very collaborative effort between the uh, informatics department and the, the epi, the meological department at the central level, the, at the regional level, and the program, national program, malaria program as well. So we can say um, between all these units uh, partnering together and with the external partners like um, the ones that uh, are working with the Regional Malaria Elimination Initiative uh, that includes PAHO and IDV and CHAI, um, I think um, slowly we are looking for some responses to, um, to the the challenge that we have um, with increased number of users. Uh, one of the things that, that we have been uh, working inside the ministry, inside the health department, is to, uh, uh, to, to, to get technical training, to increase the capacity, technological capacity, and to have um, a better distribution of the, uh, of the workflow inside the, um, inside the department. In the future, the plan is to have uh, um, better a strategic plan in order to have different um, different projects um, to mobilize resource uh, to the to the informatics office and have a better documentation in order to improve the the, the user experience and 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 the workflow inside the, the 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 informatics office in the ministry. Great. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of different approaches being used from more staff to decentralizing some of the support and coming up with a strategic plan for the future, um, which is all very interesting. Um, and I think uh, hopefully can deal with some of the increases and in just user base that you're describing, more users interacting with the system. Um, I think we have a couple questions from the chat. The first one is, what was the most significant resistance that you faced um, when trying to implement this project and from who? Um, if anyone wants to go first, because yeah, what was, uh, just to repeat, uh, what was the most significant resistance you faced when trying to implement this system? Yes, I can. Um, I can start. I can start. Great. Uh, uh, the re the first resistance, the most important from this, for example, it was. They seems that uh, it was something parallel. The the, the parallel. The, you know, the more headache while we bring 
um, additional um, system, a parallel system. Okay, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a headache. It's huge for the Minister of Health to manage. So this was the first race. While we explain that, what is uh, behind of the, the I means, uh, the interoperability, and is to manage with them. So uh, things was, yeah, it become more, more clear. Thank you. Great, so you had to sort of explain a little bit about why it's not a parallel system, um, what the malaria, like basically explaining the malaria program challenges and needs a bit more. Um, I'm so I'm maybe curious to hear from you, what did you encounter any resistance and um, from, yeah, any resistance that you would like to share from your experience? Yes, uh, actually, uh, yeah, uh, resistance from the policy plan directors and the uh, HITD. As the first time I said uh, before, uh, and also even uh, accessing of uh, HMIs, DHIS2 and NTD DHIS2 is uh, not uh, easy because they are using, they are expected to use the two system parallel. Uh, maybe as a challenge, uh, the professionals are limited to cascade the training for the regional level and zonal level. Uh, when you came to the HMIs, I think uh, the HITD and the policy plan director has uh, enough amount of uh, staff to uh, cascade the training, the capacity building training. But in our case, I think it's difficult to uh, manage the training because uh, staff uh, I'm working as the monitoring and evaluation, as well as the data management aspect in the Ministry of Health. So cascading uh, the training for the regional, the zonal level is not easy because of uh, manpower. Mm. Uh, the other one is uh, the, the organizational unit structure. As you know, in Ethiopia, the frequency of re-administration is high. So managing the re-administration for the database is not easy for interoperability uh, or for the, uh, the purpose of integration. The other one is calendar issue. Some organization use Ethiopian calendar, some organization uh, colleagues uh, or use data Gregorian calendar. So uh, integrating those uh, data is also uh, another uh, challenge. Mm. So I think uh, these are the uh, major targets. The other one is getting uh, uh, confirmation from the higher official is also another challenge because they uh, give the mandate for uh, of the data management for the HMIS DHIS2 team. Uh, so getting the confirmation from the higher team is also another challenge in our case. These are the main challenges encountered mm -hmm. during our implementation. Right. Thank you. Got it. And we just have one minute left in the session. So uh, if you could all share in the last minute your number one piece of advice to other programs who want to integrate digital uh, into their programming, of uh, maybe first Dr. Contrino, then William, then Amsaya, just number one piece of advice to others. Yes, I mean, if I understood the well, is that to, to share the device, right? Yes, one, your top piece of advice to other programs that want to start uh, integrating digital. Yeah, we are using the Android, um, yes. The, uh, there is um, a tablet, okay, yeah, um, yeah, it's um, it's a diff quite it's a different uh, different brand. It's not uh, just one, but yeah, this uh, depends on just to have a, a capacity um, to yeah to use for this for this um, uh, I mean. Um, I don't know if Simon, you want to see this or just go see 
in the theories which device we are using. Oh. All right, I think that's the top of the hour, unfortunately, so we don't have time for more questions. Um, but thank you everyone so much for joining and I hope this panel presentation was inter uh, interesting to you all.